Hey friends, welcome back to another weekly energy video. We are here in the last week of March. Holy moly. Spring is finally here. It's starting to feel good. Mm. This weekend, a bit of a challenge, right? We just experienced Pluto moving into Aquarius. That's going to be a three month thing. And so is Mars in Cancer. That was last Thursday, Saturday. Both of these things happening at the same time is ultra challenging. I think if you remember, Mars experiences complicated emotions in Cancer. Cancer is the kind of fierceness of protection, like a mother to her child. It's like a prim there's a primal instinct to protect ourselves, um, especially when we feel vulnerable, um, especially if we've been putting ourselves out there, which it's airy season. So we have been in one way or another. If you reflect, you'll see, even if you don't feel like you've done something, you're planting seeds all the while. And there's a lot of triggers coming up <laughs> because this is a period of deep transformation and exponential growth, um, opportunities showing up left and right, shifting social circles, the whole jazz. And we're extra sensitive. Everyone's extra sensitive. So the way I feel about this general period of time for the next three months or so is to take things lightly. Um, if somebody says something you disagree with, you can just choose to disagree internally and not um, avoid our Avoid um, unnecessary conflict. Um, this might, I mean, that might be also a self-preservation tactic from Mars and Cancer as well. Mm, but it's for your, for your peace. Obviously, there's things in the world we're all fighting for, like basic human rights shit. And so we have to be putting ourselves out there, taking action, um, making alliances, but also allowing for that which is falling away, where there's tension, where there's conflict, to just let those things be and, and go where they need to go, and then you can go where you need to go. Okay. I feel like that's the energy, like current energy, but again, over the next three months. So if you're not experiencing this right now, it may develop, or maybe it's already developed for you, and maybe it's just unfolding. Uh, this coming week specifically, we have this need for freedom, a feeling of freedom, even in the context of relationships. So if you're in a committed relationship, partnership, or there's just people around you, like your usuals, if you or them are not feeling a sense of freedom or independence while in the relationship, in a partnership, um, things can get kind of cold. Again, Mars in Cancer. Mars is protecting the ooey gooey parts of us <laughs> that don't want to necessarily um, be seen as vulnerable. You know, like people avoiding their feelings, their true feelings. But it's, I think it shows or it comes to show in some ways. So you may be sensing that or feeling it yourself. Freedom of expression. Oh, also a love of knowledge, education, and philosophy and independent thinking. So all this coming off a weekend where it's possible you may f be feeling misunderstood. Are you feeling misunderstood? I feel like that's an important question. This week, I think we do, you know, with Jupiter and Aries, which um, Jupiter is in Aries, but in Vedic astrology, it's just not coming into Aries. And if you remember, Jupiter being growth, Aries, the season we're in now, right, where the sun is at, that's self-sufficiency. So the most growth will come out of your ability to be self-sufficient. This is showing itself again here, right? Um, independent thinking, freedom of expression, working tirelessly and consistently, not necessarily taking risks, but definitely being entrepreneurial, 
trusting yourself, building something that you know, you know, you're trusting what is being built, what you're building in your life. And yeah, need for a freedom in relationships. No smothery or codependent biz. If you sense you are being controlled, this energy may motivate you to take back your power through emotional detachment. So yeah, emotional detachment as a way to protect ourselves, but also, uh, you know, either protect your feelings or protect your peace. On the subject of self-sufficiency and emotional detachment, I feel that it is just right to mention also again that I have group Reiki tonight at 7 p.m. Central. It's in person and it's virtual. And you know what? If you if you comment below, first person to comment will get a virtual link uh, for free to join. Uh, so do that if you want to join because self-sufficiency, emotional detachment, both to me speak to like developing or cultivating your own like meditation practice or self-care rituals. So things like yoga, meditation, Reiki, um, doing group activities so that you have accountability as well. And that's what tonight's really about. So if you want to join, drop a comment. I'll send the link. Okay, moving on. Oh man, this page of cups fell out. I did a new moon reading for myself last week and I came out as the page of cups. Page of cups. So a new cycle in love or just in emotions um, in general, a new cycle. And this is the card that jumps out, the eight of wands when we're ready to go. I'm gonna do my direction spread. So if this resonates for anybody out there, drop a comment below. But again, this is not going to be for everybody. This is just uh, dialing into someone's energy or the energy of the collective to see what wants to come out right now. Where you think you are, Knight of Swords, where you are really the Page of Wands. Um, so you think you're in a place where things are moving very quickly. Um, like things are moving even too fast. Like you're in a place of maybe where you're having a lot of great ideas. Or taking action on your ideas. But where you are really is the Page of Wands. Um, definitely having a vision and inspiration for something and you're, you're grounding it in reality. Maybe that's why if it is your experience that things are moving fast, things are finally clicking into place, it's because something about your current environment, your reality, are the right conditions for your dream to prosper. Think of it that way. Something has been aligned. All right, this is your greatest challenge the Four of Cups, which is about apathy or saying no, uh, maintaining boundaries, um, non-participation. This is about saying no to something. Um, declining invite. But things aren't, aren't moving. They are moving. So I feel like this could be you protect, like doing energy protection or just saying no to things that don't really line up with where you feel you're going. What's working? Page of Swords. Yeah, you're having a lot of ideas. You have the courage to action your ideas. Very airy season, of course, where it's... Um, this could also be like mental, like your brain is working very well. You have like increased mental capacity and it's um, leading you somewhere. That's what's working. The spiritual lesson you now face, two of cups. This is about authenticity. This is about showing your, showing your true self to somebody else. 
um, alliances, partnerships. I wouldn't normally take this card for vulnerability necessarily, but, but of course it is. I just mean to say that they're seeing each other eye to eye. And there's an angel of protection. And one of the one of the people is actually reaching out to the other person's cup. It's like they're giving each other their cups. But it's equal. It feels two two of cups for me feels very comfortable. And that's why maybe I don't automatically um it feels like you know like puzzle pieces like things click. And that's maybe why it doesn't necessarily feel vulnerable for me, but I am picking up a little bit of vulnerability here where it's um, you know, a shot in the dark. But it like, I think that what basically what it's saying, the spiritual lesson is like showing up as yourself and being rewarded for you just being you and being honest and being vulnerable. That's what's going to get this growth. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because you're being real about where you're at right now and what kind of support you may need. Like... This is the first time I'm seeing the introduction of another person on a card in this spread too. So um, it's being very real. Like you're you're only reaching out to people if it feels real to you. Interesting. How do you show up for your lesson? Uh, Eight of Swords. Examine your limiting beliefs. Examine where you're holding yourself hostage, where you're uh, knowingly or unknowingly self-sabotaging. Yeah. Self-limiting beliefs. Okay. Where are you going? The sun. How will you get there? Nine of wands in reverse. Breaking patterns. You're going to a place of joy, victory, warmth, radiance. Once you break some pattern, this looks like some sort of mental pattern or self-limiting belief. Um, maybe it's about like what it is you truly want to do. Like what adventure are you embarking on at this point? Because I see you definitely going for something. It feels like something you've wanted for a really long time. And there was maybe an injection of like new information that is helping things process. When I think of process and like it's a churning. So things are coming in and things are also coming out. It's a churning. It's like both ways. Yin and yang. Surrender, release, and also doing the reps. <laughs> the repetitions, the good habits, the um, the intentional labor. And the advice, yeah, Ten of Pentacles. So that you can achieve, receive whatever was meant to be for you. It's almost like you just got to show up. Show up for yourself. Show up for the other people here or person here who seems to get it. And go get it. Yeah, but it's it's definitely going to be require you to even look at yourself more honestly about where your self limiting beliefs are. Where are you um, preventing yourself from seeing some truth? I feel like there's truth all around. I mean, and it's in you as well. But when we're not looking at it, not acknowledging it, sometimes other people become the mirrors for the truth that's in us. Have you felt recently, one way or another, that you couldn't tell whether you were projecting yourself onto a person or if they were projecting themselves onto you? There may be some blurry lines when it tr in terms of like clairsentience, like us f picking up on each other's feelings or something like that. Or it may slip up. Uh, uh, an emotion may slip up and, and suddenly you're like looking at 
an emotion you didn't know you had to deal with or a thought that you're like, wish you wouldn't think. <laughs> um, ignoring it doesn't do anything. You have to look at it and you have to shine the light of the sun on that. Um, sometimes saying it out loud takes away an edge, saying something out loud with no expectations, no nothing, just releasing from your body some sort of thought or feeling, your self-limiting belief. Because once it's outside of you, then you can work on it. It's basically on the table. Oh, I thought this was going to be the Eight of Pentacles, but it's a Seven. The Eight of Pentacles is like the work card. Seven of Pentacles is like, we've done the work. You've done the work. And it's a moment of rest. Yeah. We're reorienting ourselves. Because the Sevens, they're on a fence. Uh, 3D, 5D, mundane, spiritual, this or that. And... To work with intention is to deliberately choose. I'm going to leave it right there. Um, if you want to check out this spread, I'm going to post a link to the I just need some direction spread on my website um, in the blog area. You can go check it out. If this resonated for you, let me know. Don't forget to drop a comment below if you want a chance to get a ticket to tonight's meditation. And I think that'll do it. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being here. I love you guys so much. Have a good week.